Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. I'm Ryan Beach and on today is actually week one, day one of a brand new routine. I just finished my four week routine from last month. And so I thought I already have to pick new exercises. So I might actually just make a video and kind of walk you guys through what I do in my routine, how I choose what I choose, why I choose what I choose, and actually just play through what the first day would look like. Not all of it, but some of it, so that you get a sense of what it sounds like on week one, day one for me. I have a number of goals for this particular video. Uh, number one, it's simply to just show you what my organization looks like. For those of you that don't know what it looks like and you don't want to watch the hours of live stream footage I have from a year ago or so, uh, this is to kind of demonstrate how I organize things, why I organize things the way that I do, and to kind of give you an idea for ways that you might be able to organize for yourself. The second goal I have for this video is to show you what it looks like for me in the beginning of the process. You'll notice that although it's not perfect and there's certainly things to refine, uh, it's already at a pretty high level, a pretty high quality or what I would consider to be a high level for myself. And this is to drive home the idea that the beginning of the process shouldn't necessarily be failing all the time, trying to claw our way into learning the material, but we should already be starting the beginning of the process with a pretty good idea of how we can sound great. This is gonna be affected by exercise selection. It's also gonna be affected by tempos we choose to use. So it's sort of a way for me to show you what it looks like for me. And that way you can start to design the beginning of the process for yourself in a way that's gonna be productive for you long-term. Let's get into the video. To start with, the way that I organize my routine is to choose six skills to work on, up to six skills, and then up to six exercises per skill. The reason I do this is we can't work on everything all the time, so I'm choosing what's most important for me right now, and then choosing exercises that will specifically target the weaknesses or the things I would like to work on in that particular skill. So instead of choosing all six skills, I actually just chose four skills this month. Uh, they are articulation, flexibility, low register, and multiple tonguing. And then a fifth skill is actually etudes, where I use a different organization to work on etudes. That's what's right for me right now at this time, and I feel really confident about that plan. Okay, so first up in my articulation section, we have Poder Etude number two, the beginning of it to line five. The reason I chose this is I actually played it last month and I'm just sort of bumping up the goal tempo a little bit that I chose to continue investing in this exercise. I like it. I struggled a little bit towards the end uh, with ease of articulation and the speed of it. So I'd like to just continue refining, continue investing to see if I can be a little bit better at, again, some of the ease and speed of tonguing by the end of this month. My goal tempo for this is 118 beats per minute. I'll hit that on week four of this program. So today my work is one time at 100 beats per minute for this section. Here's what that sounds like. Next up for my articulation work today, we have Poder uh, number four. This is gonna be the end of line five to about the middle of line nine. My goal tempo for this is 128 beats per minute. The reason I chose this was because it's arpeggiated and so I wanted to challenge myself to be able to have clean articulation, great intonation with an etude that is uh, all over the place kind of in terms of its arpeggios. Today's work is two times at 96 beats per minute for this section. Here's what that sounds like. Uh, <laughs> 
And finally, my articulation work today concludes with the one minute drill at 83 beats per minute. I've already done this in a previous video, so I'll link that up above if you wanna check that out. What the one minute drill is, how to execute it, what it sounds like, uh, go ahead and check that out. I don't feel like I need to go ahead and demonstrate the one minute drill again so you can just listen to me tongue for a minute. Kinda boring, let's move on. So the next skill to develop is flexibility. Recently, I've been using Scott Belk's Progressive Flexibilities book. I really enjoy the uniqueness, the curves and the turns and the twists and all that kind of stuff. It's really challenging for my ear, and so I find it gives an extra uh, set of difficulty, so to speak, for these exercises. Also, what I've been liking to do recently is on one of my days, I'll choose a really long uh, exercise to be able to just invest in that. And on the other day, I'll choose two shorter ones to go through. So today is page 44 out of that book. My goal tempo is 156 for this. So today's work is to just play it at 117 beats per minute. Here's the first page of that. I might speed some of it up because it's a long time, but you'll get a sense of what this sounds like. So for me, that's it for my flexibility work. I'm not a huge believer that I have to do a ton of flexibility work or a ton of articulation work to be able to see progress. All I have to do is set some kind of thing and then pick what I'm trying to get better at and then observe some progress. So in that particular exercise, I'm mostly just focused on can it be as smooth as possible uh, and perfection is the goal. So I'll never reach it. So it's just continually climbing closer and closer towards establishing very forward, very fast air and trying to keep it smooth and connected between the notes. All right, my third category, my third skill that I develop is low register. For me as a principal player, my upper register has had a lot more work and so I always have low register playing in my routine just to make sure I'm at least addressing it. It's still a weakness, you'll hear it's not perfect, but it's something that I feel I've improved upon and that's because I haven't avoided it. Rather, I've just said, you know what, this may not be great, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to figure it out. The first exercise for my low register work today is the very first page of Phil Snedekor's Low Etude book. My goal tempo for this is what looks like 120 beats per minute. So today's work is gonna be at 77 beats per minute. You'll hear it's not 100% perfect. This is a difficulty for me. And so I'm just aiming for gradual improvement, not necessarily perfection. Here's what day one sounds like of this exercise. <laughs>
The next exercise that I'm going to use for my low register development is actually just an etude from the same book. This month I chose Snedekor etude number 11. The goal tempo is what he wrote. Looks like 104 beats per minute. So today's work is at 88 beats per minute. This is a, just a musical example, taking some of the low register struggles from these drills and trying to put it into a musical example to not only give myself a musical way to work on it, but also some context for how I'm actually doing in my low register playing. When I focus just on the drills, sometimes it can be demoralizing because it doesn't seem like it's ever going to be perfect, but putting it into a musical context gives me some frame of reference for, you know what, although it's not perfect in actual music, it's still doing pretty well. Here's what that sounds like. Uh-huh. 
right, for my fourth skill that I'm developing is multiple tonguing. Today's work is all triple tonguing related, and before I can tell you what it is, I gotta tell you how I break this up. For me, triple tonguing is difficult because if I focus on trying to make everything coordinated and perfect, I don't ever really ever play fast. And if I focus on trying to play everything fast, a lot of my coordinated work sounds terrible. So I've actually just separated the two, and I have one exercise that's dedicated towards building speed of tongue, and I have one that's dedicated towards improving and refining coordination. So this first exercise is gonna be Arbin page 157, number 11. I've been playing this exercise for probably a year now, just gradually increasing the goal tempo. So this month, the goal tempo is 136 beats per minute, which is basically almost too fast. And so, yeah, I'm working my best, but I've kind of found my limit in this. But because I'm not at the end of the process, today's work is at 116 beats per minute. And here's what that sounds like. All right, so continuing on with multiple tonguing, triple tonguing on this particular day, I chose Arbin page 173, number 73, to work on coordination. I actually chose this last month as well, so I'm just continuing to build. My goal tempo for this is 78 beats per minute, again, four weeks from now. So today's work is to do it two times at 59 beats per minute. Here's what one of those repetitions would sound like. And finally, we have Arbin page 172, number 71. Goal tempo was going to be 86 beats per minute for this. And oftentimes for my third articulation exercise on a given day, I'll choose something that I feel is really difficult. So this is triple tonguing arpeggios. Uh, today's work is at 56 beats per minute, three times at that tempo. And here's what that would sound like. All right, so there you have a general overview of my practice session, why I chose some of the things I chose, some demonstration of what it looks like on day one. Again, it's not about being perfect for me, it's about having a place to start. I have some things to improve, and you can bet all of my consciousness is gonna be focused on improving these inconsistencies in centering or pitch, or maybe I just missed some notes. Like everything is going to be dedicated towards trying to improve those little tiny refinements so I can continue improving on these exercises. So the final part of my routine that uh, I think I should reveal or should tell you guys about is that I actually have an A day and a B day. So I choose all six exercises for these particular skills and then I'll actually split that in half, do half one day, half the other day. There's a few reasons for this. One, then I don't get overloaded. Number two, I have the ability to do more work on some of these exercises because I'm not trying to do everything every day. And then number three, it really reinforces the idea that I am going to work on articulation every day, but because I'm not using the same exercises, the development of my articulation is the important part, not learning the exercise itself. I'm gonna put on the screen what both of my days look like back to back so you can see my actual full routine. This is what it'll look like for the next month of my life. 
And uh, I really enjoy practicing this way because it allows me to customize my routine for where I'm at right now, but it doesn't make me practice that way indefinitely. I have the chance to check in with myself one month from now and ask, do I want to do different things? Do I want to do the same things and keep refining and anything like that? All right, everybody, that's going to be all for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. I hope it was informative. I hope it gave you some ideas about how to structure your own practice. If you enjoyed this video, if you wouldn't mind giving it a like and make sure you subscribe so you can see more content like this from my channel, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about here, uh, if you would like to know how I would approach your practicing, if you would like me to do this for you and we can work together to sort of level up your practicing and make it very goal-oriented and productive, any of that, I'm gonna leave a link down below where you can schedule a free 30-minute call with me where hopefully I can help you with anything and if we're gonna work together, we can decide that too. Thanks so much for watching the video. Always remember, stay strong, be kind to yourself, never stop growing, and we'll see you in the next video.